Hello, welcome to this National Credit Union Administration webinar, Back to School, Financial Education and Consumer Financial Protection Information and Resources for Parents and Educators. I'm Ken Worthy, Financial Literacy and Outreach Analyst with the NCUA's Office of Consumer Financial Protection. I will be your moderator for this presentation. Before we begin, please follow along as I review the important information on your screen. Please adjust the volume on your computer so that you can hear the webinar clearly. To increase the size of your slides, drag the bottom right corner of the presentation viewer. Please allow pop-ups from this site for it to function properly. Download the presentation PDF through the resource list window. Use the Ask a Question feature on the left side of your console at any time in order to ask a question. We hope to address these questions at the end of the webinar if time permits. The webinar will be closed captioned and available for on-demand viewing on ncua.gov in the coming weeks. The views and opinions expressed are those of the presenters and do not reflect the official views of nor should be considered an endorsement by the National Credit Union Administration's Board of Directors, its management, or staff. In a moment, our main program will begin with introductory remarks by Deputy Director Martha Powell of the NCUA's Office of Consumer Financial Protection. The Deputy Director will briefly outline the importance of financial literacy and financial inclusion for young people, as well as why it is a focus for the NCUA. After Deputy Director Powell, I will return as a presenter to share some of NCUA's financial literacy and consumer financial protection resources. Then Bobby Gray, Supervisory Community Affairs Specialist with the FDIC's Division of Depositor and Consumer Protection will discuss some exciting updates to their Money Smart Financial Education cur cur Curriculum. We will then zoom out from a Youth Financial Literacy Education with Lynn Harrelson, Financial Education Program Analyst with the CFPB's Office of Financial Education. Lynn will shift the focus from students to parents, caregivers, and educators with some timely financial tools, resources, and information related to navigating household finances through the potential impacts of COVID-19. Now, we will hear from Deputy Director Powell, who will, highlight, who will briefly highlight the importance of youth financial literacy education and inclusion programs as well as NCUA's COVID-19 related issuances. Director Powell, you might be on uh, mute. Deputy Director Powell, are you with us? We are not able to hear you. All right, we apologize to everybody. Just stand by as we try to get Deputy Director Powell uh, back on the phone with us. Hi, Ken. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes, we can hear you. Thank you so much. Oh, I am so sorry, everyone. I don't know what happened there, but I've got my phone on speaker, and let's see how this works. Thank you, Ken, and thank you, everyone, listening to this webinar for your patience here. I'm Martha Powell, and I want to extend a very special thank you to our guests from the FDIC and the CFPB who are joining us this afternoon. There will be a wealth of information shared that I'm sure will help during these challenging times for us. On a side note, I want to make sure you are aware of NCUA's website, which is specifically focused on the coronavirus. It is at ncua.gov slash coronavirus. This site has a lot of resources, including frequently asked questions and answers for credit unions and credit union members. For example, one FAQ we received recently was related to paying for expenses as a result of COVID-19. 
A consumer inquired if they could do an early withdrawal without penalty. Perhaps this consumer wanted to pay for back to school expenses or other important necessities. For this example, share certificates are a contractual obligation between the consumer and the credit union. So we encourage consumers to contact their credit union explain, and explain the situation. The NCUA is encouraging our credit unions to consider waiving early withdrawal fees for those who are impacted by COVID-19. Another example of a question was a consumer who was concerned about foreign or out-of-network ATM fees as they did not have access to their credit union's ATM network, but they still needed cash due to COVID-19 related issues. Again, the NCUA is encouraging credit unions to consider waiving these fees for members and non-members impacted by COVID-19. So in many cases, contacting your credit union and explaining your situation should be your very first step. We have also posted relevant resources and information from across the federal government specific to this pandemic on this, on this webpage. Now, we are currently in the back to school season and it comes as our nation navigates through the historic impact of the coronavirus pandemic. Approximately 56 million students and 3 million educators are preparing to head back to school, either in person, online, or some combination of the two. The unique circumstances of the school year present challenges to providers of secondary education, as well as difficulties with traditional learning forums. Because of the transition to virtual slash online learning, Many school districts had to adjust their budgets to provide laptops or tablets for every student. And meanwhile, these virtual learning environments still present challenges for families, as studies show 9 million children lack internet access at home, and 28% of the households are without personal broadband internet access. Furthermore, many families with children heading back to school are facing financial uncertainties due to increasing unemployment or the lack of sufficient savings. And as a result, credit unions have increased their resources to consumers by offering low-rate emergency loans, consumer loan payment extensions, and fee waivers. Credit unions are continuously finding innovative ways to offer financial assistance to members but have also faced challenges adjusting their financial education services to support their communities, which includes the school systems. On this broadcast, we hope to share information and resources that might help address this unorthodox back-to-school season for all. Whenever I discuss important issues like youth financial literacy and how credit unions are supporting educators, parents, and caregivers, I'd like to frame our discussion by highlighting the NCUA's commitment demonstrated at the highest level here at the NCUA. On this screen, you'll see a quote from our chairman, Rodney Hood. It reads, though the months ahead will undoubtedly challenge the credit union system in unprecedented ways, it's important to remember that credit unions have historically played a vital role in helping their members and by extension their communities succeed financially. This quote is exactly the focus of this broadcast, because while financial literacy is always important, it is especially important and relevant during uncertain financial times. We know that financial literacy involves the skills, knowledge, and tools that equip people to make individual financial decisions and actions to attain their goals. Certainly, financial shock experienced by many in this pandemic can derail financial goals. Yet even worse, a financial shock can be detrimental to the financial well-being and stability of individuals and households. This is why, even during these challenging financial times, we're highlighting the importance of financial education programs, conversations about money at home with young people, and access to youth savings programs. It is troubling that many young people transition to adulthood without having developed the basic financial knowledge, skills, and behaviors that are critical for establishing healthy financial futures. According to studies cited by the CFPB, only one in six U.S. students receives required financial education, and only 17 states require personal finance content to be included in the state K-12 through standards. 
A 2015 international study outlined that U.S. students struggle to demonstrate more than a basic level of financial knowledge and skills. Research from the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau shows that the attitudes, skills, and habits adults need to make informed financial decisions and achieve financial peace of mind begin to develop in youth as early as preschool. Research also shows, indicates that access to financial education programs, along with youth savings accounts, provide opportunities to develop positive long-term financial behaviors. Not only will these types of engagement help young members make better informed financial decisions, but it also strengthens the credit union's relationship with the next generation of member owners. Again, I emphasize the importance of financial literacy during difficult financial times, as those with limited financial literacy can be among those most adversely affected by downturns in the economy. With the lack of knowledge, Individuals may be more easily influenced to fall victim to frauds and scams or make choices that impede their financial well-being. So in many ways, youth financial literacy programs ultimately contribute to a credit union's bottom line because an informed, financially capable member is able to fully utilize the array of products and services that a credit union offers. I would like to take another moment to acknowledge the great work credit unions do to promote financial literacy and financial inclusion to their members. Many credit unions across the country are chartered for the specific purpose of serving the financial needs of our students, educators, and their families. Many of these credit unions work with their communities to provide financial education services to young people, such as financial literacy workshops, financial counseling, classroom education, and reality fairs, just to name a few. We know this pandemic altered the availability and delivery of some of these important services, and we frequently hear from credit unions that are adjusting to these times and attempting to reach out to their members and community through virtual platforms and other online methods. The quick response by many credit unions to adjust to these challenges is, is commendable, and uh, the creativity is, is wonderful to see. It is a testament to the strong level of commitment the industry has to the fundamental credit union mission of financial literacy. We also know that credit unions continue to provide important financial inclusion services to young people in the form of youth savings programs, and we encourage educators and schools who do not have existing programs set up with credit unions to reach out to your local credit union and discuss what options might be available. We recognize financial literacy education programs might not be a priority for many right now. And that's why we plan to discuss resources and information available to help deliver these resources and help all those across the United States to help manage personal and household finances during this difficult time. We encourage credit unions to share this broadcast with members through your website, email newsletters, social media, and other avenues. We know credit unions are already hard at work addressing the unique challenges of the community they serve, and we believe this webinar involves topics that will likely resonate with your membership. Now, before I turn it over to Ken for an overview of our resources, I want to emphasize that the NTUA, through the Office of Consumer Financial Protection, is committed to supporting financial literacy and inclusion efforts by raising consumer awareness to help them make informed financial decisions, reinforcing credit union efforts to educate their members, and increasing access to credit union services. Thank you. Now over to Ken. Thank you, Deputy Director Powell. I will briefly highlight NCUA's Youth Financial Literacy and Consumer Financial Protection resources. All of our resources are available through mycreditunion.gov, which you see here on this, on this slide. MyCreditUnion.gov is also available in Spanish at Espanol.MyCreditUnion.gov. On MyCreditUnion.gov, we provide consumers with timely and practical financial information, interactive learning tools, and frequently asked questions and answers. Content is organized to provide information and resources at various life events. For example, young people can find helpful information on topics such as what is a credit union, how to start saving, buying a car, and understanding what is contained in financial disclosure, 
disclosures and loan applications. We take a a la carte approach to our resources, meaning they can be used to supplement or augment other learning resources, such as the ones you'll hear about from our fellow federal partners. Content is also available in different formats, uh, from web articles to downloadable brochures, videos, and interactive learning tools, and our social media accounts. Examples of some of our resources include uh, this Find an Answer uh, feature on MyCreditUnion.gov, where consumers can research their own financial literacy and consumer protection questions. We have hundreds of questions and answers in our database, and consumers can search it and learn on their own. We also provide a calendar of annual financial literacy events and topics and opportunities that credit unions can promote with their members or educators and parents can use to create conversations at home with their young youngsters. Some of our other featured resources include financial adventure game for ages 10 through 15 called Hit the Road. It's a throwback to the Oregon Trail type gameplay. Uh, Hit the Road takes users on a virtual road trip across the country, but the journey's not easy. They must save and they have to spend money wisely and complete challenges along the way. Another interactive tool is World of Sense, a fun and engaging kid-friendly game for ages five and up. Users choose a character to participate in a world that they actually build on their own. They select from three different challenge levels that challenge their math and matching skills, and they switch between the building world and the matching world to earn money. And then they decide on how to spend their money through building out their virtual world. This uh, resource is available in web-based versions, also app versions. Uh, You just have to type in World of Sense and you'll find it in your Google Play or Apple stores. And here's a look at the world that they build out, along with the matching side. And finally, our most, one of our most popular resources on MyCreditUnion.gov is our interactive information graphic on what is a credit union. This graphic breaks down in easy-to-understand language, the meaning and purpose of a cooperative, not-for-profit, and member-owned financial institution. Finally, here's my contact information if you have any questions about our specific resources. Before we go on, please remember that if you have any questions questions for this broadcast, please type it into the Ask a Question box, and we will get it to it at the end of the webinar. And now, I will turn it over to Bobby Gray, who will discuss FDIC's Money Smart program. Bobby? Thank you, Ken. Good afternoon, everyone. I appreciate this opportunity to share the FDIC's financial education-related resources. Our Money Smart was created in 2001. It is the first financial education product that was developed by the FDIC. It has evolved over time. Some products in collaboration with other organizations and agencies. It is free. We have products available for individuals, of all age ranges and a Money Smart for small business products developed in collaboration with the Small Business Administration for aspiring and small business owners. So today we have products available at all ages that I mentioned, but we're going to focus on our Money Smart for youth. Um, the financial education is a part of the um, FDIC economic inclusion strategy. Our visual is a ladder, and financial education is one rung in that ladder, and it is the foundation. Our products are available in a variety of formats and available in multiple languages. So our goal for Money Smart for Young People, it was developed in collaboration with the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, and we wanted to be able to give resources for educators that they could use from trusted resources, easy to use, and as Ken mentioned, the ability to use it as a standalone or in complement to something that they perhaps were already using, and then products for parents and caregivers that they can also use to support the learning that the young person was 
learning in school, or it also has conversation starters and practical activities for the whole family. And finally, we have the opportunity to put that knowledge to work in experiential learning opportunities through financial institutions and schools and communities up offering the opportunity for um, students to access deposit accounts. So the Money Smart for Young People has four levels, beginning from pre-K through level four, which is nine through 12. Every series is set up in the same way. There are the lesson plans, standard alignment charts, as you can um, see here. There are also extended exploration beyond just the classroom setting, and we have collaborated with the CFPB, is what I'm going to call the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, um, exercises that they have also shared with us as part of the um, lessons. I'm not going to go over all the topics, but just the opportunity for you to see what's covered in these lesson plans. Everything an educator needs is there to conduct the training. You can pull from a variety of lessons. There are There's information on how to um, maybe students are at a higher level. How can I use um, this lesson with a higher level um, class? Or maybe it's just a component of it you want to use with um, students who are uh, maybe a grade level um, lower. So just um, those, that information is there as well. Um, here's a sample from each grade level. There you're going to have your lesson plan, a sample activity, the activity that corresponds from the parent and caregiver guide, and one of the matching lessons from the presentation slides um, around wants and needs. So the lesson plan and the at-a-glance table is going to tell you approximately how long it's going to take to teach a lesson, what's involved in the lesson, and if there are handouts in the student guide that is needed. Here, you heard Ken mention that we'll be releasing an enhanced version of some of our products later this year, and the Money Smart for Young People is one of those. Um, the lesson plan is going to be changing from what's on the left to um, the look and feel on the right. Many of the activities have been updated. Um, educators participated in a process of review and use, and we got some very valuable feedback from them, and the curriculum was enhanced. But the way that it's set up, all remains the same, and the topics as well that I've shown would be covered. Here's a sample of what I meant about the extended exploration. Sometimes people think of financial education only being in a mathematics, but here's opportunities to think about um, including it in a language arts class as a writing um, project. Perhaps it could be a poster contest talking about social studies and economics. Here's a sample level, level three lesson plan that I mentioned. As you can see, it talks about the time, topics that are covered. So if you want to pull a little bit from this particular lesson and information from another, this is very helpful as you're planning what you're going to cover. We talked about Money Smart Parent and Caregiver Guide. We call it Parent Caregiver Guide because we know families aren't all made up the same way. It's organized around the themes, um, earn, save, spend, protect, and borrow. And it corresponds with the lessons. 
of the classroom, the table, when you get to um, the lesson, it will show you which lessons of the instructor guide will correspond, which topics. And again, there are just um, activities that are practical for the whole family. As I mentioned, it can be used as a standalone conversation starter um, and um, those activities. So as I mentioned, later this year, we're going to release an enhanced version of the Money Smart for Young People. What is next with it? Um, here are just a few things for you to expect, and I have mentioned them. So we hope that you will um, stay in touch so that if you're not already receiving our newsletter, you will know um, when we will be rolling out the curriculum. So one of the things that we offer is train the trainer. So here's our model. FDIC provides curriculum training to the educators, um, and we support collaborations, the educator is able to incorporate the curriculum, and then the students, of course, um, build those important financial skills, which makes them um, able to make sound financial decisions for their lives. The Train the Trainer is free. Uh, we have one scheduled for September 16th. And you'll be able to go to our FDIC.gov for slash teachers website to learn more. Um, we have a one-stop shopping at our Teacher Online Resource Center. Here you'll find success stories of how other organizations and financial institutions are using the Money Smart curriculum. There are videos and resources, again, for parents and caregivers, and also a link because, as I mentioned, we developed this in collaboration with the CFPB back to their resources as well. So just a few other things for you to note. Um, we had our first curriculum targeting young people with Money Smart for Young Adults. It is currently in the process of being enhanced as well. We expect to have this product probably released in 2020, late 2021 or probably early 2022 because the process is just beginning. So more to come, but it, it, as it is in its um, existing, um, as it exists today, these are the topics that are covered and it is still available. We also have self-learning products. We expect to receive a revised version of our online. Right now we have a computer-based instruction, Money Smart program. It is available on youth and adult track. It will be replaced later by our How Money Smart Are You site. So more to come. We also have a audio version, our Money Smart Podcast Network. It is available to listen to through the website or it can be downloaded to any MP3 player. Um, access to youth savings, as I mentioned. Um, we had a pilot, two year pilot that has now um, is now a youth banking network. We started with twenty two um, financial institutions and schools. In the pilot programs, it was a two-year program, and now we have 85 or more financial institutions a part of this um, program, and there are, as a roadmap, if you're interested in doing this kind of work, we have a approach that we collaborate with other organizations. Our formal program is our Money Smart Alliance, and yes, we do have credit unions that are members. We keep, the FDIC keeps its coronavirus website updated. There are frequently asked questions. There are information for financial institutions as well as consumers. And keep in mind, um, there's one place you can go, fdic.gov forward slash teachers, or if you only remember fdic.gov forward slash money smart, Here's my contact information. 
Um, you can also reach out to the FDIC. Again, I would like to thank you for this opportunity to share the FDIC resources, and I will turn it back over to Ken. Thank you. Bobby, thank you so much. That was excellent information. I'm sure that would be helpful for credit unions. Uh, um, now we are going to transition to Lynn Harrelson with the CFPB's Office of Financial Education. Lynn will shift focus uh, for at the beginning part of her presentation from students to uh, parents and caregivers and educators with some timely financial tools, resources, information related to navigating household finances through what can be some these challenging and difficult times. Lynn? Thank you, Ken. This is Lynn Harrelson, as you said. And I focus primarily at the Bureau on youth financial education. But as you can imagine, um, when COVID hit, we all pitched in um, to make sure that the resources we're getting out are as um, timely as possible. This disclaimer is a uh, standard for the Bureau. Um, and it's incredibly important to note that this is supporting a live discussion, and we always encourage you, especially with COVID, um, new things are changing daily, and so it's very important not to take what's on the slide, but go to the links on the slide just to make sure you have the latest information. So our commitment at the Bureau has been all in. Um, it's important that consumers protect and manage their finances during the coronavirus pandemic. The CFPB is committed to providing consumers with the current information and resources to help them do just that. Federal, state, and local governments and communities are working to respond to the growing public health threat of the coronavirus or COVID-19. Temporary closures of businesses, schools, public facilities, or events are necessary steps to help reduce exposure. However, these actions may bring financial uncertainty for many people, as has been mentioned, who would experience a loss of income due to illness or workplace closures. The CFPB and other financial regulators have encouraged financial institutions to work with their customers to meet their community needs. You can find CFPB's guidance addressing the coronavirus for financial institutions, which include banks, credit unions, credit reporting companies, and other institutions on our website. The link directly to all the corona resources uh, is at the top of this slide. <clears throat> this is a hub for critical content we have created the central hub on consumerfinance.gov with the resources for consumers to help them protect and manage their finances. These resources are available in English and many are also available in Spanish. Also included are federal coronavirus resources and financial resources from other government agencies. It is updated regularly, and again, I encourage you to go directly to this site for the latest. This is just a list of where we also are putting out additional uh, information for the coronavirus. We are using Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. And I also wanted to point out that we have, the Bureau has an interagency housing website with the Department of Housing and Urban Development and the Federal Home Finance Agency. This website is a one-stop shop for consumers to find accurate information about relief options available to them during the pandemic. You can find this website at consumerfinance.gov slash housing. People with loans from HUD, VA, and AAG have Special CARES Act protections. I'm going to transition into some very specifics of um, some of the things that your um, that consumers are experiencing, and just some tips on how to um, help them. So. 
for individuals having trouble paying their bills or loans or paying on time, there may be a number of options to help. If they're unable to pay their bills on time, they should check their website to see if there's information that can help you. The CFPB and other financial regulators have encouraged financial institutions to work with their customers to meet their community needs. If someone can't make a payment now, needs more time, or wants to discuss payment options, they should contact their lenders and servicers immediately to let them know about their situation. Being behind on your credit payments, of course, can have a lasting effect on your credit. Credit card companies and lenders may be able to offer a number of options to help. This could include waiving certain ATM fees, overdrafts, late fees, as well as allowing you to delay, adjust, or skip some payments. A patron should be prepared to explain their financial and employment situation, how much they can reasonably afford to pay, when they're likely to be able to restart regular payments, and be prepared to discuss their income, expenses, and assets and that they are experiencing the hardship as a result of COVID-19 emergency. Mortgage relief. <clears throat> I'm going to give just a general overview of that, I'm not gonna dive extremely deep. Uh, however, when I'm talking about mortgage related protections, it could mean as a renter, you should check with your state attorney general. Many states have also issued eviction bans during this pandemic. For homeowners with mortgages, there's help, but first they need to access it um, and they need to assess their situation. Bottom line, regardless of your situation, if you can pay your mortgage, we need to encourage people to do so. However, there's situations where they can't pay their mortgage. And can only or can only pay a portion. It is critical to contact the mortgage servicer immediately and really get, go through what you're able to pay. It might take a while to get a loan servicer on the phone because there's going to be high call volume and there may also be impacted by the pandemic. A new federal law, the CARES Act, puts in place two protections for homeowners if your mortgage is a federally backed mortgage. You have two mortgage relief options under the CARES Act. First, your lender or loan servicer may not foreclose on you for 60 days, and I believe this has been extended. Uh, originally, it was March 18th, 2020. In other words, until May 17th, 2020, specifically the CARES Act prohibits lenders and servicers from being a judicial or non-judicial foreclosure against you. Second, if you experience financial hardship due to the coronavirus pandemic, you have a right to request a forbearance for up to 180 days. Now, dealing with debt. Dealing with debt can be stressful at any time, but coupling that with the coronavirus pandemic may make it even harder to address. As individuals plan for the potential economic impact of that coronavirus, there are a number of steps that you can take to help manage debt in those difficult times. If you have debt in collections, you can work with collectors to identify a realistic repayment plan. We have a number of resources for contacting and negotiating with debt collection companies on our website. And I encourage you to visit consumerfinance.gov slash consumer tools slash debt collection. Uh, and you have that link there. It's very important, and I can't stress this enough, to know your rights. A federal law called the Fair Debt Collection Act says that a debt collector is not allowed, for example, to um, try to collect charges in addition to the debt unless they are allowed by the contractor state law. They're not allowed to deposit a post-dated check early. 
communicate with you about a debt by postcard, which could open you up for identity theft. Use any language or symbol on an envelope for correspondence with you that indicates it's a debt collector. Federal law prohibits debt collectors from using false and deceptive and misleading practices. This includes misreputation about the debt, including the amount owed, falsely claiming that the person contacting you is an attorney, threats to have you arrested, threats to do things that cannot legally be done. So it is just critical that we point out that there are so many resources on the site for dealing with debt collectors. It's very important um, that you know before you start um, negotiating. Protecting your credit. Your credit reports and scores play such an important role in our lives today. Um, and you should use steps to blow to manage and protect credit during the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Get a copy of your credit report. And please, please, please use annualcreditreport.com. Uh, this is the one where you can get each of the three nationwide credit reporting agencies, Equifax, TransUnion, and Experian. And they, can allow you, they will allow you to get your report for free once every 12 months. Some people suggest that you get one, wait three months, get another, wait three months to get another. That allows you to get free reports throughout the year and monitor. Um, in addition to your annual free credit report, all U.S. consumers are entitled to six free credit reports every 12 months from Equifax through December 2026. All you have to do is get a My Equifax account at Equifax.com. And all three CRAs are offering free weekly credit reports at annualcreditreport.com during the COVID crisis. If you can't make payments again, contact your lenders to explain the situation. Many lenders have announced proactive measures to help borrowers impacted by COVID-19. As with other natural disasters and emergencies, they may be willing to provide forbearance, loan extensions, a reduction in interest, or other flexibilities for repayment. Need more help or have a complaint? If you need help working with your servicer or understanding your options, you may want to reach out to a professional to help you with your specific situation. A HUD-approved housing counselor, the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development approved housing counselors, can discuss options with you if you're having trouble paying your mortgage or reverse loan mortgage. This may include forbearance, again, or modified payment programs. The credit counselors are very versed in the CARES Act as well as um, other ways to help you manage through this situation. If you have a problem with a financial product or service, we encourage you to try working with the company first. Companies can usually answer questions unique to your situation and more specifically to their products and services they offer. We, can, we, however, can also help connect you with the company if you have a complaint. We help consumers connect with financial companies to understand, to understand issues, fix errors, et cetera. You can file a complaint online and really understand the process. We have the iProcess flow in there so that you understand the, the stages as well as the day and dates and times it will take for you to get through that. Now I want to shift a little bit and go back because we feel like as, as FDIC that building our children's financial uh, capabilities and knowledge is a way for our children to achieve financial well-being into adulthood. And we have these three stages. Our first, as she, uh, 
as uh, Bobby alluded to, is our money as you grow for parents and caregivers. We also have what we call money as you grow bookshelves. These are books that a parent may have in their home library or they may have, uh, can get from the local library easily. And we provide um, a parent guide with those. And you can begin building financial capability while you read to your children. And I know that's something a lot of parents and grandparents um, are using right now. School-age children, talk about money choices, big and small. Our latest is Money Monster Stories. Our Money Monster Stories are five books built around um, the My Money Five that Bobby described earlier. Learn to save, careers, borrow, spend, things like that. And then we have an additional 250 K through five or K through 12 um, financial literacy activities that have recently launched. Um, the big change is that we launched K through five and the My Money Monsters, um, and all of those will be available, um, the full 250 on Monday, 240 of them are available right now. And if you ever want to stack a, uh, um, a display in your lobby, here is our order, how to order our publications to put out that consumers coming into your credit union's financial institutions can pick up and learn more. And uh, for more information, again, I've put the consumerfinance.gov coronavirus link uh, so that you have um, that information. Thank you, and I will turn it back over to Ken. Lynn, thank you so much. What a wealth of information uh, from all of our agencies. As you can see, there are plenty of resources for your credit union or your members directly, or parents or educators to tap into. We, there are a number of resources you've heard about. So now we'll go ahead and we've got a few, a couple of minutes left. We wanna, don't want to take too much more of your time today, uh, but we'll go ahead and entertain a couple of questions uh, to the panel. Uh, our first question is regarding uh, if the services that are mentioned on, on in, the, in this broadcast, are they free? Uh, Bobby, do you want to start? Yes, thank you. Um, yes, all of the products and that we have available and resources on um, our FDIC website, um, Financial Education Tools, they are all free. Um, as I said, the curriculum is not copyrighted, so you can adapt it to the needs of your audience. But yes, all free. <laughs> Lynn, did you want did have anything to add to that? Uh, I, will, I will just ditto Bobby, yes. All of our information is free. Our publications are free to order. We're a government agency, and we are also white-labeled, like Bobby said. So if you want to adapt it, uh, put your name on it, uh, that's certainly available to you. And same with uh, uh, our response from NCUA, that they're, we designed them for you, credit unions to use, so use them as you need to to, to effectively outreach to your members. Another question is regarding um, if a, if a financial institution shares the resources, do they need to attribute or cite, uh, for example, uh, this is provided by FDIC or this is provided by NCUA? For, I'll go ahead and answer for us. You don't need to do that. It's not a requirement. Uh, uh, it, it, you can link. We have many credit unions that link to our resources and say this is the mycreditunion.gov site to provide it as a financial education program, but that is not a requirement. Bobby and Lynn, do you want to, Bobby, do you want to chime in on that one? Um, yes, um, the same for us, um, and when I say that the curriculum, for example, isn't copyrighted, we only ask that you um, would remove the FDIC information. For example, if you were to take the module and just um, significantly change the concepts um, that are there, but no, we've had um, both finance um, banks and credit unions um, put their logo on the um, resources, but yes, you can. Um, you don't have to give us. 
And Lynn, I believe you mentioned that already that there, you can that they can use your resources as well in that manner. Yes, uh, same same as FDIC um, as Bobby just related. Yes. Yeah. Wonderful. Uh, another question is if the uh, if uh, the institutions can share the games on their social media platforms. Absolutely, from NCUA's perspective, I'm sure it's the same with my colleagues. You can certainly share the games on your social media platforms. Our, our games are actually designed for you to be able to push them out to your members directly. So please do. And uh, a question about how to sign up for the, I believe this is the Consumer uh, News FDIC newsletter. Bobby, do you want to? Yes. Yeah, so um, if you go to FDIC.gov forward slash education, you can sign up for the Money Smart News. You can also sign up to receive alerts for any time that there is a um, change or update to the Money Smart products. And we also at NCUA, you can subscribe to our NCUA Express uh, updates that we send out. Uh, you can go to ncua.gov, and there's a link to sign up for the NCUA Express on our homepage. And Lynn, did you want anything to add to that? I know that the Bureau has newsletters as well. Yes, uh, you can go to consumerfinance.gov forward slash youth financial education and under each of the sections, whether you're going to Money As You Grow or the teacher activities, there will be an opportunity uh, to put your email address in and you will be added to the list. Just to be aware, if you're looking for Money As You Grow, you need to put it in there. If you're looking for the teacher activities, you need to add it there. So you could possibly, if you look for both, need to add it both places. Thank you so much, Lynn. And we'll, we've got a question from a parent, a great, really great question. It says, um, our child only has coins. Is that enough to get started? Maybe, Bobby, do you want to start? Uh, yes, um, I'll start, um, and my answer is very likely. Um, many um, banks um, have shared, um, particularly also in the um, youth banking network um, as well, but that um, allowing minors to open a savings account with just a small amount of money, um, sometimes as little as a dollar. So just check with the, um, you know, financial institution um, what's allowed. And I uh, will speak for credit unions as, as well. Many credit unions offer accounts specifically for small amounts of, of saving. Uh, so definitely check with your uh, credit union or bank uh, to see what specific savings programs are available. And many of those accounts you know, don't have any fees attached to them and are designed specifically to encourage youth savings. So great, great question uh, from a parent. Another question here, I think this will be our last question. We're running out of time, and we want you all to get be able to get back to your day, um, is that given the efforts uh, to, uh, given the COVID situation, uh, they're unable to open an account for their child in person, what options are available? Bobby, do you want to start? Okay, so um, many financial institutions um, are will allow you to open accounts remotely, such as online and even over the phone. Um, we have resources on our FDIC.gov um, website, and um, you can also call a financial institution that you're interested in doing business with and to find out what your options are and how um, to get started. Yeah, same with, uh, similar with banks and credit unions. Many credit unions are offering online account opening. You just need to, you can go to uh, mycreditunion.gov and look at the CU, uh, credit union locator tool to find a credit union near you if you uh, are interested in, in opening up a new account for a young young person, or if you have an existing credit union, just call them up and check with them to see what account options are available for a virtual account opening. And with that, um, thank you so much for all of your questions, great questions, and we see some comments from folks saying they, they love the information, so we're so happy that this information was helpful uh, to all of you. And so now we'll go over to uh, Deputy Director Powell with 
some closing remarks, Deputy Director. Thank you. Thank you so much, all of you, for uh, setting aside some time today to, to listen in on the different options that we have available to help uh, youth as well as parents today. So we, um, I'm sorry, I lost my place here. Bobby Gray and Lynn Harrelson, you've been so helpful and it's uh, wonderful to see the different agencies come together and we are all focused on consumers. So we are so happy to be able to have information to share and uh, hopefully they'll help the credit unions and the communities they serve. There are so many challenges, not only posed by the coronavirus pandemic, but um, uh, in just normal times. So this is a busy back to school season and we really trust you found this information that we shared today helpful to you. Please contact our Office of Consumer Financial Protection if you have any additional questions, comments, or concerns. And I also want to highlight our main consumer website, mycreditunion.gov, and you can access all of the different NQA resources we mentioned, as well as the resources of the other agencies, FDIC and the CFPB, and many, many more. Thank you for your time, and stay safe. Thank you, Deputy Director Powell. That concludes this broadcast. Stay tuned to ncua.gov for the on-demand version of this broadcast. Again, uh, as uh, the Deputy Director said earlier, we encourage you to please share this broadcast as a, as a resource for your members. Thank you so much for joining us today. Have a wonderful day.